myself a snack, but there's no time! cartoons and to this day I still do. They helped me develop my sense of comedy and storytelling. Shows like Animaniacs, Ren and Stimpy, The Simpsons. And of course, who could forget the sponge that lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob was so wildly successful that they even made a few games based off of the show and the movie when it came out. So let's talk about one. Oh my god. Where do I even begin with this game? It's undisputably a PlayStation 2 classic and a game I distinctly remember from my childhood. However, I only very recently bought it because when I was a kid, I exclusively rented this sucker from Blockbuster. Yeah, anyone else remember that dinosaur? Going into that place was like visiting heaven. So many PS2 and GameCube games to choose from. And seriously, those systems were my childhood. And for the longest time, I always said, one of these days I need to go buy Battle for Bikini Bottom and see if it still holds up to my expectations today. So I did. And does it hold up? Well, hell yeah, it does. It's a fucking great game. But why is it great? Well, let's go into that. First of all, I'd just like to point out that SpongeBob got some swag-tastic moves. Ah, oh, dear God. Don't ever let me say that word again. Ugh. But enough raving, let's talk about the game. Now, I'm not usually someone who needs a huge story in a game. If the game's fun, I could usually care less about story. However, story does matter, whether it be simply an adventure through a jungle or the collapse of a dystopian society. So how does Battle for Bikini Bottom tackle its story? Fucking amazingly. The game opens up on Plankton, who has created a contraption that can create a seemingly endless amount of robots. However, he forgot to turn the switch to obey on the machine, so the robots follow their own will. Now, cut to SpongeBob and Patrick. They're seen playing with toy robots, but that's not exciting enough for those two. They decide to use Patrick's MAGIC WISHING CHILL to wish the robots to actual existence. And of course, the next day when SpongeBob wakes up, he finds there are robots everywhere. Now, let me explain to you why this setup is fucking GENIUS. SpongeBob and Patrick think that they caused this robot outbreak. Well, up until the end of the game at least but they think they did it. Therefore, they're responsible for all the problems caused by it, giving their characters motivation for going on this adventure. Breaking news! Bikini Bottom residents have been attacked by a raging torrent of robot horror! So much for fixing this quietly. <laughs> Authorities are not sure who is responsible for unleashing the mechanical menaces, but they have assured us that the person is in big, big trouble. Uh-oh. Did I say big trouble? I meant so enormous that it's hard to comprehend trouble. We'll keep you posted as this tragic story unfolds. Tragically, we're sure. Honestly, I can't get over how cool it is that they do this. Like, seriously, it's the coolest shit ever. Some of you may call me childish for thinking this, but hey, you know what they say, an apple never falls too far from the tree. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry, neither do I. But just the fact that this is such a simple setup is amazing. I love it. How can you not? I think it's fitting, especially for a SpongeBob game. But anyway, SpongeBob and Patrick are tasked with running through all of Bikini Bottom and beyond to destroy the robot menace. Seeing tons of awesome locations and facing a bunch of challenges, such as helping Squidward get some jelly ointment from the King Jellyfish. Ugh, ointment is such a weird word. Getting rid of all the robots and the Krusty Krab for Mr. Krabs, or helping Barnacle Boy recover his new secret superpower. And apparently it comes from crystals. <laughs> I think Barnacle Boy is looking forward to the positive energy of the sash, if you, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. But anyway, there are tons of challenges to do. Some of which are hard as shit! And along the way, you're joined by Sandy. So, playing as either SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy, you're up against a robot army. Something else this game does completely right is its music. Every single song sounds just like it was plucked straight out of a SpongeBob episode. It's so perfect! It honestly feels like you're playing a SpongeBob episode. It's fantastic! The graphics are all kind of iffy at times, but honestly, they're still bearable to watch. That's not something all games today can boast. Adam's Venture. But seriously, there's something just charming about seeing the 3D characters coming to life. You know what's impressive though? Not once can I remember a time when the lip sync was noticeably bad. And that's impressive for a 3D game on the PS2 and even for some games today. Also, there is so much attention to detail in this game, especially in SpongeBob's house. 
Not only is it a complete recreation of notable environments of his house seen in a lot of episodes, but it's a complete tutorial of how to play the game. Upon replaying, I kind of found this tedious, but I can remember being a kid and having this be the coolest thing. Wait, so you're telling me that I get to learn how to play the game all in SpongeBob's house? <laughs> Also, another thing this game does right is teaching you about its gameplay. During the game, you complete challenges or solve puzzles to acquire golden spatulas, which are needed to progress through the game. New areas require a certain number of spatulas to be unlocked. Now, in SpongeBob's house, there's a part where Mr. Krabs explains these shiny objects to SpongeBob. Basically, they're like currency, and it'll even trade you a golden spatula for a whole bunch of them. So you're just going around the house, collecting them, until you come to doors that need a certain number of shiny objects to be accessed. Now, if you can't already see why that's genius, allow me to explain. Like I said before, to progress, you need a certain number of golden spatulas to ascertain access to new levels. So by introducing you to this mechanic earlier with the much easier to attain shiny objects, not only does that teach the mechanic to you in a controlled, safe environment, it also allows the goal of finding 15 golden spatulas to get to the first boss seem attainable. If you had just been thrust outside and seen this goal of 15 after just acquiring one golden spatula from Spongebob's house, it would seem a little daunting. But by letting you reach smaller goals inside the house, it allowed you to gain confidence in playing the game. This game's so fucking genius it hurts! Oh yeah, I should probably mention, in this game, the amount of times you can get hit before dying is shown by how much underwear you have. Just in case you were wondering if you saw Spongebob or someone picking up underwear in the footage somewhere. Yeah. One of my favorite things about this game is its scene transitions. Seriously! You might think, huh, what a weird thing to say. But shut the fuck up, it's not without reason. Whenever you move from area to area, or whenever the game's loading, you see the show's signature bubbles. Again, this is so cool! And you wanna know why? It creates atmosphere. It keeps you in the game's world even when the fucking thing's loading. How fucking awesome, am I right? I'm sorry I can't stop geeking out about this game's design choices, but come on, they're fucking great design choices! Honestly, my only complaints with this game are that the camera and the controls can be a little weird. The game also suffers from Castlevania system occasionally, where to make certain jumps you have to be positioned dead on the edge of a platform. Huh. Come on, that's bullshit. So yeah, that can be a hassle. But other than that, there's not much to complain about here. Now, another thing I love about Battle for Bikini Bottom is that there are tons of character cameos. Mr. Krabs is greedy as usual, Larry is, uh, living like Larry as usual, and the Flying Dutchman is passive-aggressive as usual, and Mermaid Man, an evil doer on the loose, got a new voice? What? What is this blast for me? Okay, so in this game, Merman Man's voice actor changed. Not too big of a problem, honestly, but it's very noticeable. All the voice does is remind me of how it's different, and that sucks. But hey, I still believed it was Mermaid Man, so I guess it worked. Speaking of character cameos, let's check up on Miss Puff. What are you wanting? Can I have some? <laughs> Just kidding, it's probably very illegal. What the fuck is up with their eyes, man? Like, for real, what kind of shrooms did Miss Puff eat before this? The most mind-boggling thing is that this is her constant animation. At not one point in the game is she not twitchy and have her eyes not vibrating. I'm sorry, but my biggest problem with this is that this isn't like her character at all. Yeah, in the show she was a pretty nervous wreck, especially around Spongebob, but the best defining moments of her character in the show were her sarcastic remarks with a completely straight, if not resentful face. I can't show this because, well, you know, copyright, but you know what I mean if you've seen the show. And if you haven't, shame on you, Harrison. Those fiends! They thought of everything! Never fear, Mrs. Puff! I'll get those steering wheels back! SpongeBob, if you're involved, I always fear. Either there were more animations planned and they just ran out of time, or they were just lazy. Maybe something's just messed up with the game, I don't know, dude. Is it weird that this really bothers me? I mean, she keeps her sarcastic mannerisms, but it just comes off as weird when she's all twitchy. It makes me feel like the next thing out of her mouth will be asking me if I want some crack. I get what you need. The boss fights are awesome. Anyone who's played this game as a kid remembers them. There were three giant robot bosses, one for each Sandy, Patrick, and Spongebob, but then there were other bosses like the King Jellyfish, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's enemy supervillain named Prawn, and the Flying Dutchman. It's awesome. Who the hell is Prawn? Who is it? Man Ray? The Atomic ooh, Flounder? Ooh. The Dirty Bubble? <laughs> Well, good to see the game maintain the same sense of humor as the show. No, worse than that. He's your archenemy. 
Prawn. Prawn! Okay, that's the best thing ever. And if you don't know what that's a reference to, what have you been doing with your life? And go watch Star Trek 2. Not the new crap, the old one. I haven't even seen Into Darkness yet, but I know that's where it's gonna be taking me. Into the darkness of sleep! hey -oh! And I think I may nerdgasm even more for this game right now. Is that cool? Alright, just let me go ahead and do so. Every single boss is awesome in its own right, and it does my favorite thing where each boss actually tests the skills you've learned up to that point. You know, like bosses should just do. And you have to have them fucking down pat, especially for the Robo Patrick boss battle. It's hard enough to aim your bubble bowl ball, let alone on a conveyor belt. Stressful shit, man. Speaking of great game design, the game also pulls a Mega Man X. At the beginning of the game, you learn all of SpongeBob's moves. And honestly, most kids would most likely forget a few of them. So when you get to the Goo Lagoon stage, which, just as a side note, requires a lot of use of the Bubble Bash attack, where Spongebob launches into the air making a Bubble Viking helmet. So right at the beginning of the level, there's a pointless little log you can mess around with that reminds you about the attack. And right after that is the first enemy that's most easily killed with a Bubble Bash. So in layman's terms, this game's brilliant as hell. And not to mention there's even a tutorial reminder. So, yeah. Battle for Bikini Bottom really ties everything together with its level choices. There are tons of unique environments that pose different threats and challenges, such as not drowning in Goo Lagoon, traversing the confusing and dark rock bottom, conquering the tilting platforms of the Mermelair, figuring out how to use the ecosystem of the kelp forest to your advantage, and helping others with their problems in SpongeBob's dream. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. There's literally a level where you're playing through a dream SpongeBob's having. And from his dream, you're able to go to others' dreams. I mentioned Squidward's earlier with having to jump on the very edge of the notes, but there's also Mr. Krabs, where you have to fend off a bunch of robots from, I assume, stealing all of his money. And then there's Patrick's dream, where he literally just hands SpongeBob a golden spatula. Patrick was never the brightest. <laughs> oh, but I saved the best for last. Then there's Sandy's. <laughs> kinda speaks for itself. It's pretty awesome. But you know what's cool? All of this Texas-related stuff has me wondering, how the hell has Spongebob gone years of showing Sandy as a Texan character and not made any reference to guns at all? Damn, Spongebob's awesome if they can pull that shit off. The last thing you may notice while playing this game is the movie theater you can't access. Well, I mean, you could if you were Scrooge McDuck or something, but I'm obviously not. But I really wanted to check it out, so I entered some codes and gave myself a shit ton of money and went in. It turns out, it's a cool little concept art theater. What an awesome idea. I think I remember doing this as a kid because I remember seeing these images and loving it. And I'll check it out. There apparently was supposed to be a Squidward boss that didn't make it into the game. That's awesome. So that's SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. A great game from my childhood that still holds up to my expectations today. Thanks for watching.